Good. So this is the first video about the lower limb. As we've uh, said, most people who would be benefit from um, massage the lower limb would be sports people, runners, uh, any kind of active uh, people who stand a lot. And on the other hand, as we did a demonstration, people who sit a lot. The contact between the chair and the hip create pressure and the pressure reduce the blood circulation. Also, because the hip attached to the chair, the next area that moves is the lower back. So there is an imbalance. The lower back moves too much and the hip stays static. So it would be really nice to, to do some movement in there. While preparing the, the client, I would like to work with you again on the towel technique. Have we learned, have we learned the tea towel? Okay, so I will repeat it. Yeah? When the client comes, usually you have the top towel yeah, along their body. Then you, need, you have the pillow, right? The pillow you put as such that the toes still touching the table. Yeah? This would not be as good as, and definitely not under the knees. Yeah? So look at the details. Then another towel, you're putting that. That's slightly small. You do need a bigger towel, okay, for that. And then you take in the this way. Good. And you putting the the upper towel, the lower towel, you tuck it into the underwear, and then you take the rest. So when you start a massage, well, maybe not in London now, 35 <laughs> degrees, it's quite hot, but most of the year, you really need to put it, even if the temperature is 25, the body temperature is 37, it can drop. So when it's getting to be 30, maybe not, but even in, in, a, in a nice sunny day, you do need it. The more you do it, the better it is. Right, so we did the back. We are now moving on to the lower limb, yeah? Lower limb, actually a lot of the technique that we're gonna learn, you see that there are quite a lot of similarity. And it's nice to, to to understand that. Otherwise you think, is it the same? Is it different? Well, it's not. It's the same technique. The application of them would be slightly different. Yeah? So when it comes to the um, low limb, I will do uh, the same, uh, roughly the same technique, starting superficial and go deeper. Okay? So you can start with the same hold. You can do the hold in slightly different way. You can do it around their feet, on the Achilles. You can do it around their knees. You can do it around their hip. Because we learned today also percussion, I could also introduce a bit of percussion when I'm doing the the, the the hold, yeah? So I can start with a light cupping. I will do it maybe with a little bit of movement, yeah? This is, you know what, this is especially good for um, for clients who are quite resistant to your massage. Not because they want to be resistant, just because, you know, sometimes you get clients and they're very stiff mm -hmm. and they don't want to move. Actually, they forgot how to move. <laughs> they forgot how to relax. So they're standing there, almost like ready for your massage. And what you want to do is just easy, ease them. Yeah? <clears throat> and it's a nice tactic to use it, really, for those who are difficult. Di for them it's difficult. Tense. They tense. So what you find out sometimes, that at the beginning they wouldn't like to move, and they use a lot of energy to keep themselves. After that, 
they, they give up a little bit because they have this understanding that they are just tightening. Yeah, you can do it here. You can do it on the side. Even a little bit slower. Remember, you just starting working onto that area. Then we need to talk about the draping, the te draping technique. So what you're doing, you're coming, maybe the camera could come a little bit closer. You're taking the top towel and you're bringing it a little bit upward or <coughs> folding it, yeah, folding it this way. Then you're taking and separate a little bit between their legs, yeah. Then you're taking two places. You're taking the edge of the towel below and the towel around their hip and you're kind of like opening the door. You don't, like a hinge, there is a hinge. You don't taking both of them because then you expose the whole hip. So you're taking these two, pl two places and you just do a hinge and drop it there. So always the other leg fully um, draped. Yeah? Then what you need to do is just lightly come and take this um, edge of the towel and tuck it under the opposite side. Yeah? That's it. So usually the middle of the hip would be fully covered and you're going to have an access to the side of the hip on the outside. Okay? Then we can really start with some effleurage. And believe it or not, this is the part that is quite similar to what we did before. Yeah, so um, you're starting quite close here. Which leg should be f uh, forward, this one or that one? Oh, wow. That one. So you always remember the four points, always closer to the middle, because this is where you're working. Don't cross it, it's going to be a lot harder to work. Yeah? So, nice starting. Good. Yes, sometimes the hand would be on its way. So you can do one of the two things, either ask them to drop the hand here. And you see why you need the towel to be there? Because the full hand is really covered, even if it's hanging on. Yeah, so you can do that. Or ask them to just tuck it under a little bit, yeah? Just like that. Good. Some people have really long legs. <laughs> yes, so what are you doing? Especially if you're tiny, you can't reach all of it. Do it in payment. So this is first payment. <laughs> and then you're coming to here and then you do the other one, okay? Or what you can do is leg moving legs. So you're doing like that. And then you do that, and you travel with, yes? Yeah? So you can travel with. So it gives you two, two steps, yeah? So step, and then step backward, and then step forward, yeah? So need a bit of oil. Good. So especially the table is low, take a big distance between your legs and really move with side to side. A lot of movement you need, yeah? Good. Right. Then we're starting with the petrosage, right? So you see this? The legs are wonderful to work with petrosage because the muscles are quite lifty. Mm -hmm. So, do you, do you know how this muscle name, not that, not that you need to? Biceps. Uh, no, gastro. Gastrocnemius. Biceps is here, very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Gastrocnemius. And these muscles are the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, what you can do, alternating hand to start with. Mm -hmm. And really what I'm looking for is to squeeze the blood out, 
Yes, and then new blood coming all the time, so I improve the circulation. And then I go closer to these bits. How do, how do we call it? Achilles. Achilles, Achilles tendon. Good. So you can work even on the Achilles tendon, yeah, with fingers. Good. Then coming to the side. Cyclist, very important to work on this area, yeah. You can do a bit like, almost like lifting, yeah. So again, alternating hands, so my thumbs is on the back. And I want you to really see the squeeze, yes, in between those two. Achilles tendon working all the way to the bone with the fingers, yes. You can work with your knuckles, like stripping it. Can I go deeper? Yeah. Is it good enough? So quite slow. I think it was with, um, I mean, we talked about pressure. How do you know if it's the right pressure, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you don't know, you just have to ask. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is it deep enough? Because sometimes if you say, are you all right? They would say yes, they don't know what do you mean. Mm -hmm. So can I go deeper and then do it and then confirm, is it deep enough? Yes, yeah, squeezing. Okay, so these are a few techniques. Then you can do nice effleurage again. And then, and then work on the hamstring. So pretty much the same. The hamstring muscles are long and thin. So they're coming the same direction as these muscles. Yeah? They are starting from here. There is the sit bone. And I'll ask you to try to feel it. It's quite interesting to feel it. Um, uh, Helen, can you bring please the skeleton? Thank you. So you can massage them really nice on both sides, on the, on the middle side and on the outer side. So quite a lot of movement, yeah? Great, thank you. So can I show you the, the sit bones? Yeah? Uh, come maybe come over there, yeah? If you see, those are the, these are the two sit bones. So when you're sitting, that's what you feel there. And the whole of the hamstring group attached to these, and they go down. So they're quite lo sorry, long and thin. Yeah. They're coming down below the knee. So when you're massaging the hamstring, one group would be here, one group would be there. Yeah. So it's quite important to try to feel the starting point where the muscles start. Yeah. Yeah? It's called the sit bone, or in Latin, ischial tuberosity, but that's for tomorrow. <laughs> okay? So coming back to here, working on the, on the hamstring muscle. Actually, also, there is another group here and here, but we leave it for some other time. Yeah? Okay, good. Around the knee, it's always nice to give it a bit more time. Yes, you're avoiding the area above the, um, sorry, on the back of the knee. Right. Why? Come and have a look, yeah? Can you bring this, yeah, and hold it there? You see there is a muscle coming this way yeah. and a muscle coming that way. Mm -hmm. This is actually an empty area and it has all the way, a, thank you, thank you. You, you have here a blood vessel, mm -hmm. quite deep and the nerve. So behind the knee, you don't apply deep pressure. You can still do nice effleurage, that's okay, but when it comes to deeper work, you just avoid that area on the back of the knee. 
yeah, uh, quite quite rightly, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. because there is no resistance there. Mm -hmm. If you just go, you may you know interrupt on something that doesn't need to. Okay, so coming back to there, another technique, nice technique, is kind of like stripping, taking the muscles and trying to separate them a little bit. Can I go deeper? Is enough? Yeah, good. And it's going across the muscle. Across the muscle? Yeah. You're using the base. The base of the wrist, yeah. Good. You can kind of even squeeze the muscles, so opposite hands, this way and that way. Yeah. A bit of lifting, fingers. reinforced fli fingers, great. All what we did before, reinforced finger, base of the wrist. Knuckles. Yes, sorry, I'll do it slower. Knuckles, yeah. Oh, reinforced ankle, um, sorry, knuckles. Absolutely. The direction is always up. No. When it comes to drain that, you do it upward closer to the heart. Yeah. When you do a, a local movement, it does not really matter. Yeah, but when you want to drain that whole area, when you do the effleurage, yes. One direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's go now to the, to the hip. So as I've said, you can work, especially people maybe on the first time, or actually no, uh, now most people would be happy to have uh, hip, um, hip uh, work. Um, can I still have, because there are a lot of bones that we need to know what we're doing. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so when you uh, massage, the muscles are, uh, this is the sacrum, and this is the hip bone, and this is the femur, yeah? So the muscles are attached from this, the side of the sacrum to the femur. So this is the area that you need to work on, yeah? Now the muscles are quite uh, built there, so you slowly work on the sides here, and then here, and then in the center, yeah? So you, you do need to kind of palpate. You can palpate the center, and then come to the side, and you're kind of working on the attachment of the muscle into the bone, so you feel the bone. Mm. Does that mean Is it deep enough? Yeah. yeah, okay. So does that mean that you're working on the attachment, which is like the ligament? Yes, Right. exactly. You actually work on a ligament? It's not a ligament, it's a tendon, tendon right. but uh, yes, you can. Still long? Yeah, good. So you massage with your fingers. Start slow, it could be quite sensitive, and then find another area and work in there. So you're, you're working towards the sit bone, is the sit bone? Uh, no, the sit bones are a little yeah. bit below. So, so I'm working around the sacrum, sacrum. the, the wedge-shaped bone. You can also do it with your with your uh, knuckles a little bit, yeah? So I work with this area. Mm -hmm. Start slow. Is it deep enough? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you can come from above. And where I work now, I work on this space from the side, yeah? Which? From here. Yeah. Which a lot of my clients tend to sure. still realize they have problems with that. Absolutely. So, we'll learn after that muscles and I will involve it. I don't want to overwhelm you, yeah? So, we'll leave the, which muscles you're working now on the side of the hip, yeah? Good. And then after that, you can drape that area, and uh, what you're doing, you're just taking and, and tuck this onto the kind of underwear, 
and then you leave this area so nothing is flopping around. Yeah? Then take a bit of oil. And you can do it together with the, with the leg. Yeah? But this area is quite narrow, right? So you can work better sometimes coming from the side. Yeah? You can do a nice a smaller effleurage. Or you can come from here. You see, this is where coming from above might be actually better because it's kind of work better with my, with my hands attaching, yeah? Good. John, how do you palpate the area? Um, palpating mm -hmm. might work better with this side. Why? Mm -hmm. Do you see how easy it's for my hand? Mm -hmm. And then you can keep working after the palpation because if I have something more to the side, that would be, um, that would be easier to work from this side, from the opposite, opposite. side. Right. Opposite side. Okay? You can work this way. You can work also with the base of the wrist. Yeah. You can work with knuckles. Yeah. You can work with reinforced knuckles, but slowly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Every once in a while, you can come to do nice effleurage around. Yeah. and nice to finish around the feet as well. We're not going to do the feet now. So, a revision, yeah? Hold <clears throat> a bit of, uh, you know, tapopement, effleurage, and then petrissage working section. Do the petrissage here, lifting, squeezing, working on the Achilles here, and then a bit more effleurage and then come and work to the hamstring, yeah? And then, uh, and then again, lifting, stripping, this way, knuckles, finger kneading, base of the wrist, base, uh, sorry, uh, dorsal of the, of, the, of the palm, yeah? And then coming into the hip. Okay, finished. You wouldn't do it the other way around. You wouldn't do it here. Why? Uh, maybe. It could be, yes. Maybe the effleurage, I will do this way, yeah. but then I could start here. I might do effleurage on the leg and work on the hip. Yeah. If this is what the client needs, I don't have to work on the whole area. If I'll have time, yes, but this is my priority. I would work only here. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. One more thing, when you do massage the lower back, yeah, when you massage the lower back, then at times you need also to get a bit of the gluteus from here. So what you do, you lowering it a little bit and then you massaging the upper gluteal area. Yeah? How? Knuckles, really nice, or you can really come from the side. Yeah, and work from the side onto the upper gluteal. So really think about the gluteal in working partially part of the back, partially part of the limb. And actually, it's, it is a, a junction area between the back and the, and, the, the, and the lower limb. So it does really make sense to see it as part of two areas that meet. So really think, lower back and in the gluteal included, hip, uh, sorry, lower limb included also in the hip. So these two areas, all the time really think about it. And I think really compared to what we anticipate, a lot of the problem will be here. A lot of tension. And later on I'll show you a lot of really nice technique to do with some stretching, yeah, yeah. So we do put, we will put more attention into this area. 
Shall we start then? Yeah, cool. Work on the 